Breaking news, a search is underway to find the driver who crashed into a fire hydrant in Little Italy this morning and caused a big old mess. Thanks for joining us here at 6 a.m. Everyone, I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Rompour. Glad you're with us here. So this all happened in the near the intersection of West Elm Street and Columbia Street. You feel for those people mm -hmm. in their raincoats trying mm -hmm. to get a handle of things. CBS 8's Chris Grow live at the scene now to tell us the latest developments and what police are looking for. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, good morning. And at this hour again, we're still not hearing from San Diego Police Department if they have a description of this vehicle, something that they're likely still working on because it's happened in the very early morning hours. So pretty probably hard to find some witnesses, but this is what's left uh, so far of that fire hydrant. You can see it there just on its side. But the big important thing is that it's not gushing water. So take a look at your screen right now. This was a couple of hours ago at the height, if you will, of this problem. Water just gushing out uh, from underneath the sidewalk, reaching above these apartment complexes right here and flooding this road, flooding Columbia here just by West uh, Elm Street. So uh, they were able to get things under control. Thankfully, it does not appear that anybody was displaced. There wasn't any type of major flooding that was caused to any of the first floor of these apartments, uh, but we do and can see that there's still water dripping from the top floor. So uh, those who had a balcony probably got uh, a good wash, if you will. So thankfully it was not a lot worse. But again, the big problem here is the fact that it was someone who actually drove and hit this fire hydrant and then of course sped off. So that's an entirely separate crime right there. One that San Diego Police Department is looking into likely needs some help there from anyone who maybe witnesses or maybe has a surveillance camera of any type uh, that may be uh, on the outside of their apartment building, maybe their balcony and so forth, maybe their front door on the first floor. Uh, anything that you maybe saw uh, in that early morning hours just before that commotion, be sure to call the San Diego Police Department with any info you may have. Eric and Netta. Chris, thank you very much for that. And yeah, let's hope they find that driver and take a look at this video just into our newsroom here. A driver somehow lost control and crashed into this house. This in North Park happened just before four this morning in the 3900 block of Illinois Drive. Look at all that damage. You can see the driver knocked out a cement pillar there on the front porch. Still not clear what led up to the crash, but pretty extensive damage to the vehicle as well. Not sure if alcohol or drugs played a factor in this. That's something, of course, police always look into. It's also not clear if anybody was hurt or if any arrests have been made. This is something we will continue to get updates on and bring it to you right here on our morning show. And now today, city leaders will share more details about a plan that would provide more protection for renters. Yeah, next week, San Diego City Council will be taking up this plan, calling for renters to get paid if they are evicted at no fault of their own. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol joining us live now to explain more on this. Why some people are also saying that this isn't enough, Dana Marie. Well, as we know, rent here in San Diego is very expensive, and especially if you're misplaced or uh, have to be kicked out of your apartment, finding a new place to live could be difficult. City leaders are saying that this new draft ordinance could help with the affordable housing crisis and homelessness crisis. Now, protections would be strengthened as to what qualifies as substantial remodel used for a no-fault eviction. Also, rental protections would now begin on day one of the lease. Also, providing financial assistance by a landlord when a lease is terminated at no fault of the tenant, specifically providing two months rent relocation assistance and three months for a senior or a person with disabilities. At this point, nothing is offered. Now, the Southern California Rental Housing Association, which represents landlords, say this is new ordinance contains many positives, like consistency with state law that they've been pushing for, but they do still have concerns, such as the relocation assistance, noting that they don't want to have to pay excessive amounts to high-income earners. We spoke to Logan Heights resident Barbara Pinto, who does not fall into that high-income category. The 77-year-old widow has worked a part-time job just to scrape together rent. She and other members of the tenant advocacy group ACE has been pushing for 6 to 12 months of relocation assistance, especially needed, she says, along with more time to move for senior citizens. Most of us would have to downsize. We have to find something that would meet our needs. That, you know, depending on our health problems, a lot of us can't go up and downstairs. 
And Mayor Todd Gloria and City Council President Sean Elo Rivera will host a virtual news conference today at noon regarding their draft ordinance providing more tenant protections if they do um, agree and pay rent and agree to the terms of their lease and meet those terms. So, of course, if you'd like to attend this press conference at noon, head to CBSA.com. More information is there. A story link is already posted. I'm Dana Marie McNichol, Eric Anetta. Dana Marie, thank you for that. Today, the Supreme Court may rule on access to the abortion pill called Mifepristone. This comes after a judge in Texas ruled the FDA approval of that medication should be revoked. California Governor Gavin Newsom saying he's working with lawmakers to protect pharmacists who dispense that abortion pill, even if it loses FDA approval. New this morning, an El Cajon Motel has 30 days now to make changes or it will no longer be allowed to operate. The Motel 6 on Montrose Court is where police say two registered sex offenders sexually assaulted an underage girl. Police say the men were staying there using a hotel voucher meant to help the homeless. El Cajon's planning commission voted on some requirements for the motel, including complete, completing human trafficking training and adding a 24-hour security service. Morrison. A big yes. Motion approved unanimously. This morning, cruising in National City is rolling back into town. The city council held a second hearing yesterday to officially lift the ban and voted to address safety concerns as car shows begin to take place. The ban was put in place in the 90s over concerns about crime and traffic, but many argued it profiled people of color. It's very easy to pin communities of color in these, in these kinds of lights. So it was critical for us to make that point so that we can overcome these barriers and really hold our elected officials accountable. We have great jobs and look at our kids, our families. We're not out there causing any issues. The change in the ordinance will take effect in 30 days. The United Lowrider Coalition is planning a celebration in May. And this is the, I mean, this is artwork for these guys. They Absolutely. polish those cars up and these Ladies spend a lot of time. This is their hobby for, mm -hmm. for a lot of these uh, lowriders. And uh, family bonding, too. Totally. I remember hearing from kids who watch their parents yeah. work on their cars, and they just love it. Brings it's the community like, together. It's culture. amazing. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. And, hey, we're finally starting to move toward more spring-like weather, which might encourage you to want to get out and about a little bit more. We know the beach is probably going to be a popular place to be as we head toward this upcoming weekend, and that's because we start to see temperatures climb to the 70s, 80s inland. Take a look. This is live outside right now. For from Mount Soledad, we're facing Mission Beach and Mission Bay itself, and you could see how we sure have some clouds out there, but we actually are going to see quite a beautiful sunrise when it takes place. We're still uh, just under 10 minutes away. Sunrise is at 615. Sunset's going to be at 722 p.m., and we're already starting to see the beginning phase of what will be a beautiful day, and that's uh, symptomatic not only in what we see in terms of the forecast, but in what we see right now as your overnight low temperatures, which we'll look at in a minute. Forecast for the day shows 63 along the coast, 67 inland. These temperatures are still cooler than average, but we're moving in that right direction. Today, Wednesday is going to serve as a transitionary day away from the cloudy skies and toward sunshine as well as some warmer temperatures. So wind speeds die down, clouds break apart, sunshine prevails, and temperatures gradually warm their way up. Right now, with these colder than normal temperatures and colder temperatures compared to yesterday, we see that that layer of uh, clouds that normally acts like a blanket for us helps to keep in some warmth not as present today. And that means that we're able to cool down a little bit more. 46 right now in Monterey, 53 in Santa Barbara, 56 here in San Diego and uh, in Vegas right now 55 degrees so let's take a look at Julian wind gusts are going to be dying down and that's why that wind advisory expired at 5 a.m. about an hour ago we go from the 30 mile per hour range for your gusts down to the 20 mile per hour range sustained speeds just around 20 miles per hour drop down to the teens and then maybe even toward about 10 miles per hour all as a ridge of high pressure builds Temperatures warm Friday and Saturday. Those two standout days where inland could make it to 83, 82 degrees or so. Pretty comfortable. Let's transition to traffic. See how the roads are looking as we start off your 6 o'clock half hour here. We are taking you to what looks to be two crashes. Number one line is blocked and left-hand shoulder blocked with a crash on the 163 northbound. That's after exit 8 Claremont Mesa Boulevard. So in the Kearney Mesa area. Farther south, we've got the number three lane blocked with a crash on the 805 northbound, and that is at Home Avenue, just south.
south of downtown San Diego. Both are causing some minor backups here at the six o'clock hour. You can see the orange there on the screen. That means slower speeds, but not quite to the stop and go range. We'll let you know once we uh, see these crashes cleared. Back to you.